message, praise God, that I have to revisit, praise God, but comes with so many, some other scriptures being added. Genesis chapter 3, I'm going to be emphasizing on verse 8 to verse number 12. And the word of God reads, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Note carefully in verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day. Now, first of all, this judgment seems open with the Lord's voice. Now, before Adam and Eve sinned, before God's voice was a welcome sound in the garden. Now, Adam and Eve, they're no longer hearing that welcome sound, amen, but they're hearing the voice of judgment. Why? Because of one single sin of disobedience. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 19 says, For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners, that points to Adam. So by the obedience of one man shall many be made righteous. That points to Jesus. Now, before Adam and Eve sinned, they were perfect and flawless. Both of them enjoy a perfect relationship with a perfect God. Now, not only they heard the voice of the Lord, but they heard walking. Now, the word walk means that God was looking for Adam. What captured my attention here God who is omnipresent, hey, come on. who is everywhere at the same time, and all-knowing, limit himself looking for Adam. God. <laughs> now, here we see God is the aggressor. Because when Adam sinned, God immediately pursued after him. God went in search for Adam, all because of one single sin of disobedience. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man's sin, enter into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for all have sinned except Jesus. Okay. Now, after Adam sinned and God came looking for him, this served to remind us that when we sin, God will not abandon us. But when we sin, God expects us to confess our sins immediately and don't allow sin to become a gap. 
Because if you die in your sin, you know where you're heading towards. Amen. 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 So it is important for us, amen, to confess our sins. Amen. So that our relationship with God that was disrupted as a result of sin can now be restored back into fellowship. Amen. But if you sin and you and you don't confess your sins, that means, amen, that gap remains. Amen. amen. Because, praise God, you haven't confessed. In First John chapter 1 and verse 9 says, But if we confess our sins, our sins, amen, that means we have to own up to our sins. Amen. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? But God requires us to confess if he is going to forgive us. Amen? Amen. Now, not carefully. Adam and his wife hide themselves from the presence of God. Now, when the Lord came to have fellowship with Adam and Eve, they were hiding from the Lord. God. Amen? Now, hide and seek <laughs> is normally a fun game. We know about that, right? Hallelujah. Amen, praise God. But when Adam and Eve sinned, this was no fun game at all. Now, because of their transgressions and disobedience, Adam and Eve, amen, fellowship with God is now broken. For the very first time, they were guilty and conscious of sin. They were aware of their own sinfulness. Amen. Adam and Eve knew that they were naked, sinful, shameful, and uncomfortable in the presence of a holy God. God is so holy that he cannot tolerate sin. Sin is a nightmare to God. Sin is an enemy to God. God turned his back on sin. Amen. Praise God. Now, the garden is supposed to be a place of joy. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Outward circumstances and situation doesn't give us joy. The joy of the Lord is different, amen, to what the world calls joy. Our joy is a perpetual joy. It's eternal, but the, 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 the joy of the world is temporal. Amen? That isn't going to last. Amen? The garden is supposed to be a place of praise. The Bible says that God inhabit the praises of his people. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Jesus. My soul shall make it boast in thee, Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. God. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord delivered me out Thank you, Lord. of my fears. Yes. Amen. The garden is supposed to be a place of worship. Uh -huh. Jesus said, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
God desire true worshipers. God is supposed to be a place of fellowship with God. The Bible says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. If you have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, it will hinder your growth. Amen, praise God. It will impede your relationship with God. You'd be unable to grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, now, praise God, the garden, it becomes now a place of fear and hiding. In Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso confess and forsake them shall have mercy. God is a merciful God. That's why the Bible says that his mercy endured forever. And his mercy, they are new every morning. Thank you, Lord. We have to thank God, amen, for new mercy every day. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We have to thank God for his grace. We have to thank God. Uh, the psalmist says, Surely goodness and mercy, my God, shall follow me all the rest of the days of my life while I'm here on earth. Surely goodness and mercy. Every day, praise God, that should be, amen, when we leave our home, praise God, amen, we should open up our mouth and say, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Amen. All the rest of the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Wherever I go, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. On the job, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. You're going into the grocery, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Praise God. All the rest of the days of my life. As long as I have breath, I will confess. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, praise God. That means, you see, the world has life. The mere fact that surely goodness and mercy is following you, eternal life is following you. Amen. Now, verse 9 says, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, where are thou? Again, God who is all knowing and God who see everything mm -hmm. at the same time yes. is searching for Adam by saying, Adam, where are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, but watch this. Notice how God approached Adam. And we should approach our brothers and sisters in the same manner when they slip and when they fall. Amen. Notice how God approached Adam. God did not approach Adam making accusation. Uh -huh. God. Hallelujah. Amen. God came to Adam asking question. God pursued after Adam seeking answer. God will always seek out man to solicit an answer. Notice the question is spoken to Adam. And Adam will answer God's question with an explanation in verse 10. Adam said, I heard thy voice. I heard thy voice. Amen. In the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Now, what's this? Amen. By the word afraid, it points to the fact that fear is the first symptom of fallen man. And that's why the Bible says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. But of love 
power and of a strong mind. I have love. I have power. And I have a strong mind. If you are a fearful person, then you will have to confess, I have love, I have power, and I have a strong mind. I tell people, the only thing that I'm afraid of right now is hell. I'm afraid of hell. That's why I want to do, praise God, everything possible to please my creator. Amen. And I can only know that, praise God, by looking into the purity of God's word. Amen. Amen. Praise God, which, praise God, points you to life. Amen. That's the only thing I'm beginning. Every day, praise God, it gets scary whenever I think about that place. Because it is a place of torment. It is a place where the worms never die and the fire never goes out. It's a place that you will remember everything that you have done. And it scared me. Hallelujah. Now, so Adam was afraid of his own guilt. That he tried to hide from God. You know that was sin. Amen? Amen. But Adam did so without success. You see, God wanted Adam to know you can't hide from me. Amen. You can't hide your sins from me. Amen. Praise God. Even if you see secret sin must be revealed. You see. Uh, we can hide our sins from one another, but we can't hide, amen, from God. Now notice, God questioned to Adam again in this verse, praise that this time, as a matter of fact, in verse 11, saying to Adam, who told you that you were naked? Adam, who told you that you were naked. At least not me. <laughs> Amen? Now, the way God framed the question removed the pretext of ignorance. Because it wasn't God who told Adam that he was naked. Amen. It wasn't God. Amen? Listen to this church. Praise God. Amen? It was Adam on conscience and then told him that he was naked. From the moment, praise God, from the moment, praise God, Adam sinned, he was convicted immediately. Amen. Hallelujah. Even before God confront Adam, Adam already knew that he was sin naked. When you live in sin, praise God, it's a shame. Yep. It's nakedness. Mm -hmm. You may not even view it that way. Mm -hmm. But spiritually, mm -hmm. amen, praise God, it's nakedness. Mm -hmm. Adam consciousness and the effect of sin told him that he was naked. God didn't even have to tell him that. Amen. Adam felt the inner awareness of his wrongdoing called guilt. Adam tried to cope with his guilt and shame by denial and avoidance. Now, when God confront Adam because of his transgression and disobedience, this is how Adam respond in verse 12. Ladies, grab a hold of this. The woman, is what I'm telling God now, the woman who thou give to be with me, she gave me the tree and I did eat. The woman gave it to me, I eat. Amen. Now, watch this, praise God. Adam 
refuse to accept responsibility for his sin. From the um, and in verse 13. Oh, let, let's look at it this way, praise God. He refused to accept responsibility for his sins amen, from the way he responded to God's question. First of all, Adam blamed God. Amen. And the woman whom God had given to him for his sins. He blamed God. And in verse 13, Eve copied the typical response, amen, for her sins. She said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Now, like Adam, she refused to accept personal responsibility, amen, for her sinful action. Instead, she put the blame on the serpent. But in a sense, she was blaming God also because God created the serpent. Now, church, what we are witnessing here is a blame game. Yeah. Amen? Did this happen in marriage? A lot of that, right? <laughs> it's a blame game. First of all, Adam blamed God and Eve. And secondly, Eve put the blame on the serpent and God. But in the eyes of God, both of them refused to accept their personal responsibility for their sins. God just wants us to own up to our mistakes. Own up to our sins when we sin, praise God. Go before God. You don't have to, you don't have to come before your pastor. Just go before God because your pastor can't forgive you. Amen. Go before God, repent of your sin, pray, and when you when you cry, praise God, when you're repenting with tears, it's a good sign. It means that the Spirit of God is still with you. Amen. God is still with you. Amen, praise God. And He's nudging you, He's urging you, praise God. He's encouraging you. Return back to the sheepfold. Amen. So, like Adam and Eve, amen, praise God, all of us have uh, this inborn tendency, amen, and that is to blame others for our failures. We all go through situations where we look to blame others. We either blame others within our own family for our failures. We even blame others, amen, on our job. Hmm. We blame others, amen, for our failures. We blame others, amen, for the poor choices that we have made, amen, either in action or in words. But God, finally, God wants us to stop putting the blame on others Hallelujah. Amen, and be brave enough yes, to own up to our failures and mistakes. Yes. Listen, church. The only way that we can keep our relationship with God open is to take full responsibility for our sins. Praise God. Amen? Amen. I sense the calling of my of God upon my life at an early age. Praise God. But you know what? I never allow myself to be distracted from that calling. Amen. Amen. I went through the storms in life, I praise God. But then I was God's fear. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. There was something within me keep telling me, praise God. Amen. 
Keep your focus on me because I was very God-fearing until I come to that place of knowing God and accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And that is what set me free. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It is an inward calling. Is what you call an inward intuition. Spirit keeps ministering to you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Finally, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, praise God in verse 10. I'm going to close with this. It says, For godly sorrow, what's this? Worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Now, God wants us to be sorry for our sins. Amen. Let me say that again. Amen. God wants us to be sorry for our sins. Sincere sorrow is part of the process of repentance. Amen. Amen. It means that you have regret what you have done. Amen. That's genuine repentance. Amen. That is true repentance. Amen. Praise God. And you don't want to do it again. Amen. Now, if you keep repenting, as the sister was saying, you keep repenting and you're asking God to forgive you. That is what you call a sin of repetition. Mm. Amen. Presumptuous sin. Mm -hmm. And dare you not, because if you die, praise God, in that sin, again, church, I'm emphasizing, praise God, if we die, in our sin, praise God, we are not going to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. That message is clear and simple. Okay. Right. And if we die in our sin, we're going to fall in hell that is beneath us. Amen. Amen. But, oh God, hallelujah. You don't want to do it again and again. But Satan wants you to go far beyond sorrow. Amen. <laughs> I don't know if you get that one. I said Satan wants you to go far beyond sorrow. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Although you have been repented. Mm -hmm. Amen. Although you repent and you have been forgiven by God, Satan still wants you to feel guilty. Amen. But let me tell you something, church. Praise God. Once you repent of that particular sin, you know that God forgives you and He forgives you. Thank you, God. You don't have to go back and repent again you, that particular sin. Thank you, God. Amen. Now, watch this, praise God. Amen. In closing, praise God. Amen. Satan used guilt. He used guilt to ignore. The very reason that God has forgiven you. He wants you to feel guilty all the time. God ain't forgive you. You repent, but God ain't forgive you. And your response to that is to let the devil know that he is a liar and the father of lies. And when he speaks, he speaks his native language because there is no truth in him. That's right. That's right. So you have been forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Just believe the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Don't doubt the word of God. The promises of God is yes and amen. God said I magnify my word above his name. Thank you, Jesus. Believe the word of God just as it is written. Say God I believe the word of God. It's through the word that I have been delivered, amen, from fear, failure, and all defeat. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind. Confess love, confess power, confess a sound mind, praise God. 
Isaiah 41 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you. And I will keep you with my right hand of righteousness. The psalmist said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen, praise God. This time he said, Do I walk through the body of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So God wants us to walk in victory and not in defeat. Always remember that he always causes us to triumph. Hallelujah. Amen, praise God. So, forgiveness it keeps the door open Amen. to relationship. Amen. But unforgiveness, it closes that door. Amen. And if you have that unforgiveness in your heart, you will never see the kingdom of heaven. If unforgiveness is in your heart, there is no way that you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. No sin will enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's why God has made a way for us to escape hell. Is to repent. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, thank you for listening. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Give the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're faithful to us.